Hello everyone, I'm Chinmay and I work with the GEP and today I'll be showing you how to annotate the colon one gene in Drosophila erecta and I'm going to show you how to fill out the annotation report form but before we do that I kind of need to share my screen. And let's just start off by pulling out all the documents we need. These are the four documents that you are going to need the annotation walkthrough, the pathways annotation workflow, and the project details table document, which you will only need initially. You will also need the annotation report form, which is a document that you give back to your faculty. This document has many sections, specifically project details, the gene report form, or the synteny table. It also has the consensus error report form, which more often than not, you do not have to worry about. It also has the coding sequence report form as well as the individual isoform CDS report form for each isoform. The transcription start site report form right there. The untranslated region report form. The full transcript report form with its individual isoform reports as well as instruction for how to prepare your project for submission. However, in this video, we'll only be talking about how to fill out the project details section as well as a little more information that goes up to page 3. But before we start, I'd like to explain what these documents are. This first document, the annotation walkthrough, is the most important document for the Pathways project since it goes over how to annotate what to annotate, why we're annotating something, as well as science behind every step of the process. And this annotation workflow document is sort of a summary of the annotation walkthrough. So if you've done annotation before, you can use this document to kind of walk you through which steps go in what order. And this project details table document is only going to help you annotate the first page of the annotation report form which we will be going over in this video. And because I don't need the project details table document right now, I'm just gonna close it and full screen the annotation report form. So let's just start off first with the student information table. And we need your information because we will need to be able to contact you. So I'm just gonna add in my name right there. Just remember that when you type something in, it's going to be auto-capitalized. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you might not. In this case, we do, so it's fine. And then we need our academic email, which ends in .edu, as well as our faculty instructor. In my case, it's going to be Dr. Laura Reed. And now we need the course number that the faculty who gave you your gene for the GEP is teaching. Since I don't have one right now, I'm just going to put an example. So I'm just going to call it GEP420 or something. And then we need the university. And since I'm at the University of Alabama, that's what I'm going to type in. And now we're going to go to the meat of this video or the project details section. If you can't follow along with this video, the document that's going to help you fill out this table is linked in the description. So let's just start. Your faculty must have given you some of the information that goes in here already. So let's just take this one at a time. So for me, the project species is going to be Drosophila erecta. It's likely going to be different for you though. To get the NCBI taxonomy ID, you'd have to go to the genome browser. And then on the genome browser, you can select your species from this box down here. For me, it's going to be Drosophila erecta, so I'm going to select erecta. And after that, I can click on the species name that pops on the right, right there. So Drosophila erecta. And on the top left of the page, I should have my taxonomy ID. In this case, it's 7220. So I can just copy it, go back to my report form, and just paste it in there. So when something gets pasted, we just need to make sure that we conserve the formatting to make it look nicer and make sure it doesn't look wonky. So I'm going to click on that and say keep text only. And now I need the NCBI assembly ID. So we go back to the genome browser and the NCBI assembly ID is right there. dr underscore calf one. So I just copy it. 
and I can go back to my report form, paste it, and then keep text only as always. Next, we need the assembly accession number, which is on the same page as your genome browser. So it's right there, the GCA accession number. So once we've found it, we just have to copy it, go back to our document and paste it, and as always, keep text only. If you happen to see this point 0.1 or point 0.2, it means it's a version number, and we suggest keeping the version number intact as much as possible. Next, we need the name of the genome assembly that we are annotating in. And you can tell that the name of the genome assembly is right there, but in this format, we can't copy it. So we need to go within our assembly by clicking go. Then we can take everything that's after the name of the species, copy it, go back to our annotation report form, paste it, and as always, keep text only. Getting the scaffold name that your gene is on is a little more involved. You need to go to the gene record finder and type in the name of your gene. In my case, it's going to be Cal1. And just remember that your gene name is going to be case sensitive. So what we're going to do is we're going to blast it against my target assembly. So let's take the entire FASA sequence, copy all of it, and then we need to go and blast it. To find BLAST, let's go to the Pathways Genome Assemblies page, find our assemblies, in this case Drosophila erecta, and click on Genome BLAST, which takes us to the tBLAST10 of our specific assembly. Now tBLAST10 blasts a peptide sequence against a nucleotide database. So we can just paste our sequence in here and read the headers for each of the FASA sequences. Now a header in a FASA sequence is any line that has a caret. So once we delete that, we can just hit blast. So now it says that we are on scaffold 4929 with this accession number. And this is the best hit because that huge jump of the E value that reaches approximately zero to something that's as large as eight times 10 to the power minus 49, which is the best hit by far. So I take that accession number the CH ID, and I paste it in the assembly accession part of the project details document. And as always, keep text only, and then the scaffold name you can get by going back to your genome browser and pasting in the accession number of the scaffold, which should take you to your scaffold of interest. In this case, it's going to be scaffold 4929. You can either copy and paste it, or you can just type it in. Sometimes you might not need to conserve formatting. So the gene ID in the target species is going to be D plus the first three letters of your species, in this case, Erecta, so D, E, R, E, followed by an underscore, and then the name of your gene. In our case, it's going to be Cal1. And it's important to remember that the gene names are case sensitive. So if there's a large letter, keep it large. If there's a small letter, keep it small. But as you can notice, the D in the Drosophila is large and it's not what it should be. So we have to go back and correct it. Great. Now we have to do something similar to our reference species, which is always going to be D. melanogaster. So what we can do is we can type in D-M-E-L underscore and the name of our gene. Just remember, the D in d should be small. And now we need the accession number of the ortholog in Melanogaster. And to do that, we need to go to Flybase. So we can just start going off to Flybase and type in CUL1 in the J2G box or Jump to Gene box that pops up on the top right. And once it's done its search, we can just click on CUL1 or Cullen1. There should always ideally only be one. And now that we've found our gene, we need the accession number of the gene in Melanogaster. To get that, we need to go to the RefSeq locus region within Flybase. And the accession is the NT ID, which we then can copy and paste in the document. And as always, keep text only. And the chromosome of the ortholog is going to be right above the NT. So in this case, it's the 2R, which we can either copy or just type in ourselves. It's also important to give us the date of the submission. 
which is important so that we can track when the model was submitted um, to get the student annotator to approve the document. The next section starts off with asking you for a permanent email address and which is especially important for after you graduate. So in this case, it can be anything. So I'm just gonna put in my GEP email address. And remember, it's always gonna auto capitalize. So if your email doesn't have a capitalized letter, we need to uncapitalize it. We also need an alternative email address and it has to be an email address, remember. Since I don't have one, I'm just gonna leave it blank. We also need your phone number in case we need to call or text you to kind of approve the document. And we will only resort to this if you don't reply to your emails. We'd also need a more formal name that we can use for publication of this document. You also need to approve this section of text by clicking on the checkbox next to it. And what this section of text is saying is that you approve your name being on the publication, you acknowledge that it's going to be published, and you approve your name being on it and therefore being associated with it. Next, this third page shows you how to navigate this document and suggests a few things. It shows you how to add text within this document, as well as how to navigate the document. And to navigate the document in Word, all you have to do is click the View tab, enable the navigation pane, and then click on these three ellipses. This shows you the flow of the document, and if you have a really large team with many isoforms, it's going to be very useful to you. And this section shows you how to add images in the document, which we'll go into more depth a little bit later. And this section shows you how to download images of multiple things, which again, we'll go into when the time comes. In the next video, we're gonna talk about the gene report form section, or the synchrony table as we like to call it. All right, thanks for listening. The next video will be talking about the gene report form as well as inputting consensus errors if you happen to have any. And until I see you next time, stay safe.